we get for you? Hi, can I just have a venti pumpkin spice latte? Anything else? No, that's it. Alright, 564. Hey now, coincidence, it's natural. Can I have 564? You can keep the rest of it. Thank you. Have a good day. This, ladies and gents, is the Holy Grail. Ooh. What a beauty. If you've never tried one of these, I feel sorry for you. Absolute perfection. Who would have ever thought that a DIY BuzzFeed tester turns into a drive through car food reviewer? Definitely not me, but what I can say is Starbucks. Hit me up with that sponsorship. What's going on my peeps and welcome back to another Sunday video. Now, if you guys remember a couple weeks back, for the first time ever, I did my own original DIY. Of course, it was the rainbow potato chips. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll leave it in the description if you want to go check it out after this. But because that video went so well and some of you guys enjoyed it so much, I figured let's give it another go. It is the fall. It is the time of year where the leaves are turning colors, the pumpkins are spicy, and all you guys are back in school. I don't know why I threw that last one in there, sorry to bum you all out, but basically what I'm trying to say is welcome to the season where there's going to be a million and one pumpkin spice videos. And before they get too oversaturated and overdone, even though they probably already have, this week I'm gonna do my first one. And it's gonna be a little ambitious here, I don't know exactly how it's gonna turn out. I'm definitely a little nervous, but basically I'm going to be combining a pumpkin spice latte with chocolate chip banana bread. In my mind, I've been combining them and it seems like it'll work out if that's going to translate to an edible piece of food, I don't know. But I guess it is worth giving it a shot, so let's get right into it. So guys, there is a ton of ingredients that are gonna go in to this week's recipe, and I'm going to start with a boatload of flour, some baking soda and salt, some chocolate chips, some dark brown sugar, four to five overripe bananas, butter, some pumpkin pie spice left over from Thanksgiving last year, one egg, and of course, God's gift to this earth, aka a pumpkin spice latte. Now guys, I just have to warn you ahead of time, we're gonna be combining a bunch of different smaller batches of ingredients and then combining them all together at the end. So don't get discouraged from trying this just because it seems like too much work. I promise you, or at least I hope, it'll be worth it in the end. But we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. So in a nice big glass bowl, I threw in two cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, a pinch of salt, and mix that all together. I then set that off to the side and grab myself a second bowl. In that one, you're going to throw in a whole stick of softened butter along with three quarters of a cup of your dark brown sugar, and then mix that together either with your hand mixer or your stand mixer, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure the two ingredients are thoroughly creamed together. In your third bowl, you are going to throw in one egg, about a half cup of your pumpkin spice latte, and a tablespoon of your pumpkin pie spice. That might seem like a lot, but don't be afraid because this stuff isn't all that potent. But once I got those three ingredients mixed up together, we can finally get to the main event of this recipe, which is of course the bananas. You are going to take your bananas, peel them all up, and then mash them into a bowl. You want really, really overripe bananas for this just because they're gonna be sweeter and easier to mash. Not completely rotten, but you get the picture. Also a tip for when you're making banana bread or anything like this, you want about two cups of mashed banana for one loaf of bread. So I quickly measured that up, made sure it was right on the money, and we could get back into mixing these ingredients. So first you're gonna take the egg and pumpkin spice latte mixture and put that into the bananas. Once you've got those two bowls thoroughly mixed up together, you're gonna throw that bowl into the brown sugar and butter mixture, mix that up as well, and then finally you're gonna throw that into your dry ingredients. This may seem like overkill and a lot of extra unnecessary work, but trust me, I don't know the exact science behind doing this, but it comes out 110 times better than when you just throw it all in the same bowl right off the bat. After just a couple minutes of mixing all of your ingredients up together, I finally topped it all off with about a half cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. 
After carefully folding all of those into my batter, I whipped out a deep bread pan, coated that up with a nice thick layer of cooking spray, then sprinkled down just a little bit of flour. Is the flour completely necessary? I don't know. I just do it all the time because why not, right? And finally, we can throw this into a 350 degree oven for about an hour. Yes, we're gonna have to wait 60 whole minutes for this beauty to be done. But at last, it was done, and I knew this because I checked with a toothpick and made sure it came out completely dry. That is the signal that you can take it out of the oven. I gave it about 15 or 20 minutes to cool off, then carefully popped it out of my pan, of which it came out very easily, thank you flour. Gave it that first slice, and oh my gosh! I don't know what food perfection looks like, actually I do, but this has to be the next best thing. I threw a couple slices of it out onto my plate along with a nice tower of whipped cream and dressed it up with some more pumpkin pie spice over the top, then a light sprinkle of some cocoa powder and some powdered sugar. This right here is the peak of culinary excellence. Besides the deflation of the whipped cream from the humidity in my house, I don't know how much better a dessert can look. I'm also a little scared as to how good I'm getting at decorating stuff like this, but that's besides the point. It smells amazing, holy crud. To basic white girls everywhere. Holy shit, guys. I don't normally curse in my videos either, but this warrants one, oh my god. This has to be the best banana bread I've ever eaten, and I'm not just saying that because it's my own recipe. Overwhelmingly impressed, guys. Wow. If you have an hour or two of free time within the next month or so, you gotta try this. If you like bananas and pumpkin spice lattes, please do it for me. And if you do, please send me a picture on Twitter or Instagram because it would make me so happy if I saw that someone actually did it. When it's warm like that, it is just perfectly sweet and chocolatey and oh. If anything, I'd say I would like a little bit more of the pumpkin spice flavor to come out, but even that I feel like is too much criticism. 10 out of 10. Hope you guys enjoyed my second ever original DIY. If you did, smash a like on this one for me. Can we try to hit 7,000? I don't know if we did on my last video, but I know we're close, so let's try to hit it on this one just in case we didn't. All I have to say is that I hope you're all strapped up and ready for the pumpkin spice apocalypse for the next two months, because if that recipe is any indication, we're about to have some delicious original DIYs coming up. But I hope you have an absolutely awesome beginning of your week, and I'll see you right back here on Thursday for another BuzzFeed test. Peace!